Sergei Markov joins us now for some analysis. He is the director of the Institute of Political Studies in Moscow. Sergei, thank you for being with us on the news hour. Uh, clearly, there is no love lost between the two leaders. What can they achieve uh, today or uh, during this summit? Yes, of course. Both leaders hate each other. And uh, you should remember that uh, Joe Biden, um, uh, 10 years ago, asked Vladimir Putin uh, not to go to the next presidential uh, uh, position, and the next presidential stage. Uh, and, uh, of course, Vladimir Putin uh, told uh, Joe Biden that Russia is independent, uh, and uh, Putin also independent. So now the, uh, Putin is the president. Also, uh, they believe, uh, Putin believes that uh, Joe Biden stolen Ukraine uh, from uh, Russia, and Joe Biden believes that uh, uh, Vladimir Putin stolen uh, Crimea from uh, Ukraine and uh, America. So nevertheless, uh, this uh, uh, summit uh, will be uh, successful uh, uh, for sure, 400 percent, because uh, some of the deals already have been uh, decided uh, before. The most important is de-escalation in uh, military sphere. Uh, because uh, Vladimir Putin took very tough position this April uh, on the Ukraine issue, when pro-American Ukrainian army was ready to uh, start attack against Donbass, Vladimir Putin uh, made concentration of these three big military groups on the Ukrainian border and showed that he ready to send Russian troops uh, to liberate uh, uh, Ukraine from pro-American regime. After this, uh, it was a real uh, possibility of the war between Russian and American militaries uh, on the uh, Ukrainian territory. After this, it was decided in both in Washington and Moscow that, OK, it's time to make break, it's time to make de-escalation. So it's already have been decided. As a result, Joe Biden will promise Vladimir Putin now on this Geneva talks that Ukrainian uh, army will never organize uh, a, a massive military attack uh, on Donbass. And Vladimir Putin, uh, on his side, will promise that if such, a Russian army will not uh, enter uh, Ukrainian uh, territory. Let's it's see. one. It's mostly important. Uh, let's see. Secondly. What... Yeah, let's see what happens and if it happens later, but it, it is a progress if it happens, as you were saying, at least that deal. I do want to ask you also about the possibility of reaching some kind of deal on the prisoner swap, swap uh, soon. Yeah. That would also create a positive atmosphere uh, between Washington um, and Moscow, uh, having in mind, as you were saying, how different these uh, two presidents are. Uh, they already, it's already almost decided that we will be exchange of the uh, two prisoners, Bo, uh, uh, Boot, uh, Russian uh, in American prison, and uh, Wilson, I think uh, it's American uh, spy in Russian prison. Also, they will decide that ambassadors will come back on their working place, because now they are not working. And also, they will decide that number of diplomats will be increased, uh, maybe hundred percent, maybe two hundred percent, maybe three hundred percent. Very uh, sufficiently, the number of diplomatic corps will be increased in both American embassy in, uh, in Moscow and the Russian embassy uh, in Washington. Also, it will be decided uh, that uh, uh, new talks about uh, uh, non-preparation of the uh, technologies of mass destruction weapon, uh, this working group will be uh, established. And also, it will be uh, some new uh, constant negotiation uh, on the uh, limitation of the uh, new arms, uh, specifically arms in the space and uh, possibly uh, arms in uh, cyberspace. It's uh, the thing that should be discussed. But also, we don't expect that we will no stopping of sanction. But we know that after Joe Biden will be back in the United States, he will uh, organize new sanctions against Russia uh, uh, again. It's uh, almost for sure. Sergey, thanks so much for that insight for us. Let's see what happens uh, throughout the day. Thank you for now. He's the director of the Institute of Political Studies in Moscow.